Welcome back. Today I'm going to use the current voltage or JV testing setup to characterize the performance of our organic solar cells. How does JV testing work? Light will illuminate the solar cell and the resulting current is measured as a function of applied voltage. Since a solar cell is a diode, it will show rectifying current in response to a voltage sweep. In the EMDS PV module, we will extract and compare several performance metrics from this measurement. The testing setup is located inside of a nitrogen glove box, meaning we first must confirm that the glove box is ready for use. So, first we'll check there is sufficient nitrogen pressure and the oxygen and water levels are below 0.1 ppm. A Verisol AAA LED lamp will source light into the glove box and a Keithley source meter will apply the voltage and measure the resulting current. The intensity of light emitted from the lamp varies as a function of distance. Therefore, our first task is to use a calibrated photodiode to find the height that corresponds to the intensity equivalent to one sun. First, the BNC cable between the photodiode and the Keithley source meter is connected. The photodiode is slid onto the optical rail and held in place by tightening the set screw. And then a Kim wipe is used to identify the square of equivalent light intensity. The aperture of the photodiode should reside near the middle of this square. Then, the Z micropositioner can be adjusted to change the photocurrent until it reaches the desired value. Raising the photodiode decreases the photocurrent and vice versa. Now we're ready to begin measuring solar cells. After stopping the photocurrent measurement, we'll disconnect the BNC running to the photodiode and connect it to the BNC output of the pixel switcher, which will allow us to quickly cycle between the 8 pixels in a single experiment. We'll use this solar cell holder to suspend solar cells over the lamp at the same height as the photodiode, meaning we will not need to adjust the Z micropositioner. To install a solar cell, first we'll move the clips to the side to remove the free plate. Then we'll place a black testing mask with rectangular apertures in the pocket. The mask precisely defines the flux of light incident on the solar cell. Then, a solar cell is placed onto the mask with the electrical contacts face up and the free plate is reinstalled to make electrical contact and to keep the solar cell in place. Next, we'll slide the photodiode holder assembly off the optical rail and then slide on the solar cell holder assembly. Then, we'll plug in the 9-pin connector that connects the holder to the pixel switcher. Note the brown wire, which serves as the ITO cathode lead, must be plugged into position 11 on the receptacle, which is located on the right side of the receptacle. The other eight wires connect to the eight pixels. Now we can begin setting up the software. First, we must launch the pixel switching software, Max SSD, and confirm the pixel switcher is properly connected to the computer via the COM3 port by pressing the Get Module Settings button. 
Then, individual pixels can be switched on or off as indicated by the green light. Next, while measuring the photo current, we'll switch between pixels and confirm that all eight pixels are electrically connected. We'll leave the first pixel on for now. After setting up the Pixel Switcher software, we can begin testing using the LabVIEW program Giles Solar Sim Program V17. First, we'll run the program and log in, which will create a folder containing all of our data. After that, we'll edit our scan settings, such as the pixel area, voltage range, and voltage depth size, among others. Please read through the JV SOP and PV module for detailed descriptions of the scan settings. Once settings have been entered, we'll press the scan button. We should see two curves appear on the screen, one for the forward voltage sweep and one for the reverse. We will only use data from the forward sweep in the PV module. Once the second curve appears on the screen, switch pixels using the Max SSD software. Once all eight pixels are scanned, the next solar cell can be tested. Do not stop the LabVIEW program until all solar cells have been tested. Individual text files and pictures of each scan are saved in your folder, and the summary table listing solar cell metrics in the LabVIEW program can be found in the logs folder. Thank you for watching the CEI sponsored video of current voltage testing of solar cells. Please check out our other videos showing solar cell fabrication and characterization.